In my first video, I talked a lot about Tango's Redstone Factory, but if I'm totally honest, I had no idea how it worked. I'm gonna change that this time. So, first off, there is a lot of Discord channels that talk about these technical schematics, and this one is called Dreams 4Game Tick Decoder, and that's pretty cool because there is so much good stuff out there that's not on YouTube. Everybody in that channel has struggled with how exactly this decoder works. And it's no wonder why. We have three different signals and the order of them, you have an outcome of a decoder that is either going to pick up the signal and trigger observer, or it's, gonna, it's not gonna fire. And so that never happens. And so because of that, it's hard to wrap your head around exactly how all of that works. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how this works in practice. So let's uh, watch these different signals and we'll do a side by side. You can see on my TV screen, I have it split up. So on the top, it's gonna be a successful decoding message. On the bottom one is one that doesn't get decoded we'll see how that changes just slightly. We're going to break this down step by step and I'm gonna show you how these different things work. And by the end of it, we will have a great idea of how this all works together. Timing is absolutely critical in order for the encoder and the decoder to work properly. And there's three different sets of signals that process in order for it to work successfully. So let's talk about those three different signals. The three signals are an encoded signal, an inverted signal, and a controlled signal that triggers the decoder. Now let's break down the three signals and how they work with the decoder. I've set up a manual system here so we can trigger one encoded signal at a time. We will run through several different examples to get a working uh, idea of how the system works. Note, any of these gold blocks are non-functional pieces and are used only to extend the rail system on to, uh, to the next set of observers or to the decoders. This is the same setup that we saw before. And I'm adding a control line so that way each time we trigger an encoded signal, that will uh, also send the control message. And the control message is always going to trigger the light. There is no other way to really power that bulb, and that is the critical piece here. So the control line always has to be last, so that way it will know whether to turn the bulb on. Over here, I've got the encoded signal, and I've set up this one to be five. So we have the first bit, and the second bit is turned off, and the fourth bit is turned on. So four plus one is five and again the control. So if I send this signal down, you can see that it sends the message. The encoded message is first sent and that control line, like we said, powers the copper bulb. So that's great, we have a working system. I have on this next row, I have it set up to six and that is uh, our intended signal. But on that next row, we have seven. So you have three blocks. What's gonna happen when we do this? So set, same setup, it sends the signal of six, but now we have both of these being lit up. So let me do that again. And there you go. It's triggering both systems and there's no way to stop the second one from turning on, um, except from one simple change. So to stop this, we can add in a signal to the rail, something like this, and go ahead and add that, and a button, any button will do. All right, so when I turn this on, now the rails turned on. 
So now, now with that signal set, and I turn this on, now just the first one turns on and the second one stays off. And that's because of the inverse signal would automatically trigger this rail and stop it from being powered. And that really is the real secret. The problem is, is how do we simulate that same process? I set up the inverse signal. And now that we've got that set up, we'll have to start talking about the encoded signal. Over here, we have these emerald blocks and we can ignore these. So for the encoded signal, it runs through these observers at two game ticks and sends the message along. We can ignore the gold blocks. So that's the timing for the encoded message. On the same token, the inverse signal gets sent through. So we ignore the emerald block, we ignore the gold block. And so the first signal that gets picked up is the observer here at two game ticks. So they're firing at the same time for this rail. The second set of observers picks it up and that gets activated for two game ticks. So we're now at four. The control line has one more observer that makes it six game ticks. So with that, let's go ahead and test this and see if this works the way that we expect it to. So here's our system and I have got these different messages encoded. I've got the seven bit at the top, which we're not testing, but we do have the six bit. We have a second bit and the five bit decoder set up. So this is all manual, so I'll have to go one by one. And here is the second bit, so I'll trigger it. That should trigger the second decoder from the bottom. And beautiful. Didn't affect any others, so that is great. Let's go ahead and remove this. Let's test the fifth one. So again, manual setup have this all set up here. So it should only trigger the first one, just like the first example we tried. And there you go. We have a working decoder. So we should celebrate. We've, we've done it. In this total system, we have something that represents a very close representation to the final design. I made the changes so that way the Dreams decoder matches what we've been testing. The setup here with the rail and two observers for the control bit. So here's my simple clock and it's just going to rapid fire all of these six different inputs. So this will start triggering those encoded messages. And we expect to have all copper bulbs being activated and then deactivated. And unfortunately, we have all but the last one operating. The real difference here is that when we have all three bits set like this, it's not able to pick up the difference between the encoded and the messages. Let me uh, change this back and let's talk about what's going on here. And with this setup, we have exactly the same thing. So we know that this particular piece was set to four game ticks and it was causing a problem. So what does the scaffolding do here? Now we have it set up where this uh, inverse signal is being triggered. The encoded signal was fired off first and hasn't been picked up yet by the decoders. And so basically we have the trap door that is activated. This is going to change the state over on the scaffolding. So it was standing on the trap door and hasn't picked that up yet. But in the next game tick, it's going to change state to a one. And that's one hanging off of this piece of scaffolding. And because it was changed at one game tick, 
that is going to add only one game tick extra to this setup. So in the next state, let's just go one tick again. And, oh boy, one tick. And so now you can see that the inverse signal is now firing. And so that one tick, you've got the encoded message that has triggered and is activating anything with the solid block. And the inverse is now set up and it's getting ready to fire. But we haven't seen this pick up yet. Moving to the next game tick, now the control line is firing immediately after. So you can think of it as we have three game ticks to work with. The encoded is first being triggered. And so if this is fired here, it's gonna immediately disable any of the decoders at this point because of solid blocks that is encoded. And we're gonna do one tick at a time now. So the inverse is picked up and is now getting fired. And that's picking up that signal. So this is the second tick that is being activated. So if these were solid blocks and this was firing at, at this point, then that would power the activator rail. And that's all we need to stop the decoding process to happen when this control line is picked up by the observer. And so now we have the control line. This is now off to the side. So that's quasi powering the dropper and so this is an encoded signal. Now, because we don't have solid blocks here, you can see that the observers are going to take a little bit longer to pick up the signal. So there's nothing powering this activator rail. And the experts said that it's all about timing. They're not joking. This all comes down to a total of three and a half game ticks to pick up the signals, handle the inverted signal, and power the control line to decode the message. As long as that inverted signal is not being fired, then it's going to receive that message and decode it. Otherwise, encoded signals picked up, it's gonna mask that inverted signal so that it's no longer powering anything. So it really is all about timing next time when we talk about decoders. There's several different versions that I think is really neat. So at some point in the next few videos, I'll be running through a, a short history of some of the most interesting decoders that are out in the, the wild. So we're going to talk about the, the original decoder that started it all. And finally, uh, we'll be talking about um, Crane and Floppy's decoder and how that has transformed the storage tech community. Until next time, thanks for watching.